Hello and welcome to my video reaction. Today we're going to be reacting to this video, watching it, reviewing it, talking about it. This individual, his name is Isaiah, has many, many followers on the internet and what's unique is that a lot of these followers, it's very rare that you actually find a video of them talking about their conversion. And so 1 John 4 says, believe not every spirit, but test the spirits whether they be of God. And so if you're talking to someone who says they're saved, well, I wanna hear how you were saved. You know, I don't wanna hear a 10 minute speech about all these different things, but I wanna hear, you know, did you hear, did you believe, did you repent, did you confess, were you baptized? And are you walking in newness of life? And what we see here is this individual talking about his conversion experience, and we're going to listen to what he says. So in this video, he says the F word, but he says rather than saying the F word, he just says F word. So that's just a viewer discretion advised for those who are listening in. And so we'll go ahead and take a listen to what he has to say as we watch this video, and then we'll talk about it right after. I said, this will be the last time I ever set foot in church. And this would be the last chance I ever gave God if there was one. Mm. So I walk in, I'm sitting there. I was making sexual jokes about the worship leader, not mm. knowing it was a pastor's wife at the time, but I'm just out there. I'm just dark, yeah. twisted, shame, all that. So he calls, he said, if you want to find out God's will, if you want to encounter the whole thing, come forward. Felt something grab me and start pulling on my shirt. Mm. Like in a physical way, mm. I go to the altar and in my mind, I'm like, what am I doing? Mm. Why am I even going up here? This is stupid. I said, God, I don't effing believe in you, but if you are real, I'll give everything up. I felt like I was no longer at that church. I was seeing a bright light and I heard an audible voice say, Isaiah, I don't want 99.9%. .9 and so then I go from bright light, seeing a vision of me preaching to thousands of people. I come back to my body. I was born again and I'm more passionate about Jesus now than I've ever been in my life. And that encounter, dude, just radically changed me. Okay, so what we've seen there is him saying he went to an assembly where there's a, a female, a woman up on stage preaching. Now that violates 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 1 Timothy chapter uh, 2, verses 11 and 12. And we learn what he says is that he's sitting down, he doesn't believe in God, and yet he's there in an assembly where they're praising God. He doesn't believe in God, and something starts pulling on his shirt once the preacher said, if you want to encounter the whole thing come to the front and basically he was forced to go to the front because there's some force that is pulling on him in a physical way to go up to the front and rather than asking the question wow what what's pulling me up here he asked a question why am i even going up here right now god i don't even believe in you you see everybody overlooks the the details as if this type of stuff is normal as if normal people even you know in this case somebody who doesn't believe in god has a physical force that is physically pulling on their physical shirt and pulling them in a direction that they don't want to go that's not the first question you're asking you know <laughs> what is this pulling me the question is asked i don't even want to go up here why am i even going up here you see, so there's a lot of loopholes that we hear. He says he heard an audible audible voice from God. Now, he didn't say it was from God. He just said he heard an audible voice. And so in the scriptures, when individuals are giving an account of their conversion experience, like Saul, they say who it was who spoke to him. Was it the father? Was it the son Jesus? You have individuals in the New Testament where you read the spirit spoke to him. So such a vague statement, I heard a voice. Okay, well, that's just so many different uh, similarities to the New Testament because it's based on a forgery of the New Testament stories. Even the account, I saw the light and I heard a voice, saw a vision of myself speaking before thousands of individuals. That is just a forgery of a combination of the stories of Saul. Saul saw a light on the road to Damascus. And the Lord told Ananias, said that Saul would be one who stood before individuals and bore witness. But what it appears happened is here's a combined story of, oh, you saw the light and you heard that you're going to appear before these individuals. And so that's just another thing. And so the story was, is that he's forced up to this altar against his will, being pulled to the front. He sees the light. He leaves his body. A voice, don't know whose voice it is, spoke to him. And he saw a vision of himself. 
being successful, standing before many different individuals, he comes back to his body and he's born again. You know, you won't find any example like that in the New Testament. You won't find anything that even approves anything like that, saying that that's how you get the forgiveness of sins. What do you read about in the New Testament? Individuals hearing the preaching of Jesus, that he died for your sins, rose again. They place faith in that gospel message. They're willing to repent and make changes, understanding that, hey, that's the better way. Those are the instructions that we need to follow, the gospel instructions. So they're willing to repent. They're baptized to receive their forgiveness, and then they begin walking in newness of life. But what you just heard is an individual was born again by, in a vision, leaving his body and coming back to his body. And so, you know, there's just so many different loopholes, and so many people are just so dissatisfied with the simple gospel message. Like, what sounds more popular? Like, what sounds like it's going to gain a lot more attraction? A story of my conversion, me telling you that something like that. Oh, I got pulled on my shirt, physically came up front. Uh, I left my body, saw myself, heard a voice, came back to my body. Does that sound more appealing than, well, I heard the gospel message. I believed it. I repented. I was baptized for the forgiveness of my sins. Which one is going to, you could say, sell more books? Well, the first story, the first story, and a lot of people just aren't satisfied. And even in an age of miracles occurring, you have Philip and the eunuch, no miracle occurred. Philip didn't even perform a miracle to confirm this message to the eunuch and the eunuch believed him based on the scriptures. And it was just so simple. He was baptized right there. You have other accounts. The Corinthians, the Corinthians heard, believed and were baptized. That's Acts chapter 18, verse eight. Why can it not be that simple? Everyone wants to make up these sophisticated, long stories about how they were saved, about these things that happened to him, them. And then you learn that this person said in a vision, they left their body, a voice spoke to them, they came back to their body and they were born again. Jesus said he had to be born of water and the spirit. What is that? That's a reference to your faith being involved when you submit to the command to be baptized. Your faith is in the operation of God who raised him from the dead, Colossians 2, 12 and 13. Your conscience is involved when you're baptized, 1 Peter 3, 21. And so individuals think that they're born again without obeying anything. But the Bible says that you are born again through obedience, through the Spirit. So God bless y'all. Thank you for twining. twining. That's a, what, a, a term which sometimes I accidentally state when I say, Thank you for tuning in and thank you for joining in. Thank you for tuning in. And so what we've seen in this video, um, that is a story which a lot of individuals believe. Why? Because they're not studying the New Testament. They're not looking at the pattern of how individuals became Christians under the New Testament. And I would love for nothing more than to talk about what they did in the New Testament to become Christians. And it's much more simple than you think. A lot of people think they listen to these stories and say, my conversion experience isn't as, you know, elaborate and miraculous as yours. Well, that's not even a conversion experience. That's a delusion. It's an illusion. It's a deception. And anybody believing that stuff is not studying their New Testament the way that they should be. If you want to see how individuals become Christians, you read the book of Acts. You read the book of Acts and see that Peter told them when they said, what shall we do in Acts chapter two? He didn't say, repeat after me and say a prayer. What did he say? Repent and be baptized. They believed the message. He taught them about Jesus who died and rose again. They said, what shall we do? Repent and be baptized. You have the Philippian jailer, Acts chapter 16. He says, what shall we do that we might be saved? And he says, believe on the Lord Jesus. And then he spoke to him the word of the Lord. He told him what to believe. And guess what? That same hour, what happened? He was baptized, him and all his household. So all these conversion stories, would you say that this individual is converted? I would not. I would not say that this individual is a Christian. He did not follow the pattern. He's following the pattern of what many individuals are following today. And it's a false pattern. And it does not lead an individual into the pattern that we read in the New Testament. So um, ho hopefully this has been beneficial. And what are we doing here? We're getting you to train your ears to differentiate between good and evil, between the spirit of truth and a spirit of error to see if what people say actually matches up with the word of God. And if you disagree, you can go ahead and leave a comment and we can discuss those matters. 
And so may God bless you today as you study his word, as you examine these things. Is it good to listen to stuff like this? Not to believe it, but it's good to listen to stuff like this to realize how it is that we should talk with individuals. You know, should you uh, be interested in somebody's conversion account? You should. But if the conversion account doesn't match up with the New Testament, what do us Christians have the duty to do? Say, you didn't follow the pattern. You need to follow the pattern of the New Testament. Hebrews 5, 9, Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all that obey him. There's a pattern. There's instructions. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7 through uh, 10, talk about Jesus on the day of judgment will not save those individuals who do not obey the gospel. So we need to obey the gospel. How do you obey the gospel? Well, when you obey the gospel, you're born again. The gospel is the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. How do you obey the death, burial, resurrection? Romans 6. You submit to the command to be baptized, to be buried with him, where you're risen with him, to walk in newness of life. And at that moment, that's how you're born again. That's how you become a new creature, a new creation, not through some miraculous event of seeing a vision you know, which a lot of people have those similar experiences, um, but it's just a deception. It's an illusion. And they hear somebody else converted in that way. So they say it about their own self, their own conversion. But that's not a conversion at all. It's a diversion from the truth. May God bless you. Thank you for your time. Uh, Lord willing, we'll have another video posted tomorrow. May God bless you as you study his word to do his goodwill. Have a nice rest of your day.